Okay, kiddos, welcome back. Now we are moving on to our last lesson in nine point uh, in unit nine, which is nine point four. We're going to talk about the sine, cosine, and tangent ratios. Okay, so we're going to be working with stuff that looks like this over here and this over here. Okay, so let's get right into it. This is one of the um, best lessons uh, that I like to teach because I think it makes a lot of sense for many students. Uh, so let's talk about it. Let's first talk about identifying the sides of a triangle given an angle. Okay, so we've talked about the sides of triangles now given a certain angle. So uh, say if you're looking from the position of A. Okay, so if we said this is from angle A's uh, perspective. Right, so if you're looking like from angle A, the hypotenuse always we know is going to be right across from the 90 degree, right? So if we know that, that is the hypotenuse, right? So that one's going to be called AB on this one, right? AB is a hypotenuse, right? So we would call that AB. Now, what is opposite side from A? Okay, well, from the position of A, if I shot an arrow, I'm thinking I that's how I think about it. I'm going to hit the middle of the other side. So the opposite from A is B, C, right? And then we have what's called the adjacent. Okay, so the adjacent sometimes is tricky if you're trying to find it first. So I think if you go hypotenuse first, we always know what that is. Opposite, I think, is easy. And then, okay, well, so if this is the opposite, then this has to be the adjacent. Okay, so the adjacent is going to be B, uh, A, C. Okay, so that's the trickiest one is the adjacent uh, because you might think, which one's adjacent? But opposite we know is that one. Hypotenuse is that, so that has to be the adjacent. Okay, so those are the three terms that we're going to talk about today. Okay, so we're going to be listing those on each of these. So let's practice this first. See if, how much you've gotten so far from that basic description. I want you to see if you can get this first one. If you think you got that, go do the second one, but we'll do the first one first. Identify the hypotenuse, opposite, and adjacent side given the angle, just like we did. Okay, so pause the video and do this one. Okay, so given angle A, right? So that means from the perspective of A, right, uh, what are these three, right? So hypotenuse. Well, first off, we know the hypotenuse is always this one, right? It's always right across from there. So that's going to be the hypotenuse, which is going to be A, C, right? Okay, then uh, O for opposite. Opposite given A opposite if we shot an arrow right just like that this would be the opposite right so that would be b c okay and then uh then this one has to be the adjacent right that has to be the adjacent okay so the adjacent is a b okay so i think if you go in that order hypotenuse opposite and then adjacent that's the easiest way all right so given that try to get number c uh number two all right, so this one says from angle C. So from the perspective of angle C, so if we had that right over there, uh, hypotenuse we know is always across from the 90 degree angle. Okay, so that's going to be the hypotenuse. Okay, then the opposite, opposite of C is going to be AB. All right, so if the opposite of C is AB, and oh, we said the hypotenuse is going to be AC. Okay, then the adjacent. So if that's going to be the opposite, then this one has to be the adjacent, right? So the adjacent is going to be BC. Okay, so it's as simple as that. First, we know the hypotenuse. Opposite, uh, if we said from C, is going to be AB, and then the adjacent is going to be the other one. All right, so go ahead and do those first practices on delta math, and now let's move on. Okay, so now that we can tell uh, the opposite, hypot adjacent, and hypotenuse, uh, now we're going to talk about what's called trig ratios. Okay, so what trig ratios are, okay, first off, a ratio we know is just a fraction, right? So a ratio is in the form of a fraction. It's used to find a triangle side length if we're given one side and another angle. Okay, so uh, it's only on a right triangle. It's only on a right triangle. So um, on a right triangle side length, given one side and another angle. Okay, so uh, we're going to use these three trig ratios. So the first one's going to be called sine. Okay, so this is pronounced like sine. 
Okay, so we would say the sign. Let's go. Let me do this. We would say the sign of angle A. Okay, that's how this is pronounced. This is pronounced. The sine of angle A is equal to the length of the opposite leg. Okay, so looking from the perspective of angle A, the opposite leg over the length of the hypotenuse. Okay, so we want to focus on the opposite over hypotenuse on this one. Okay, so uh, that's the sine. Okay, so then moving on from there, if we said the cosine. So the cosine is a different one. The cosine of angle A, so that's what this is pronounced as, cosine of angle A is equal to the length of the adjacent leg over the length of the hypotenuse. So we can think the adjacent over the hypotenuse. Okay, so that's the cosine. Then our last one is listed like this, and this is uh, tan A is pronounced tangent of angle A. Okay, so the tangent of angle A is equal to the length of the opposite leg over the length of the adjacent leg. Okay, so those are our three ratios that we need to talk about. I know it's maybe a little confusing right now so far, but I know you can get this, obviously, uh, very quickly from here. So we're going to take the sine uh, of an uh, angle is equal to the length of its opposite leg over its hypotenuse. The cosine of any angle is equal to its adjacent over hypotenuse. And tangent is equal to the length of opposite over adjacent. Okay, so now that we know that uh, basics part of it, let's get right into uh, some examples. Okay, so uh, the main thing is we're going to use our calculator, our Desmos calculator, uh, or we can use our yellow one. But the, the main thing is, and this is a crucial thing, it has to be set into what's called degree mode. Okay, so on your computer, make sure that it is set to degree mode. It's very crucial. If it's not, then you're going to get the wrong answer. Okay, the default, it will uh, stays on there, but sometimes it gets changed. So make sure that that is true. Okay, all right. So then you're going to, uh, here's how you use it. So first off, you're going to make sure it's in degree mode. Second, you're going to determine which ratio to use using the information given. Okay, so we'll see uh, sign is opposite over hypotenuse. So we can remember SOH. Okay, cosine is adjacent over hypotenuse. So we can see, remember, uh, C-A-H or C, so C, and tangent is opposite over adjacent, so we can think TOA. Okay, so this is something that we remember is um, so C, TOA. So, ka, toa. So, remember, sine is opposite over hypotenuse. Co uh, cosine, adjacent over hypotenuse. Tangent is opposite over adjacent. Okay, so let's check this out right over here. It says solve for x. Okay, so we, we notice that x is uh, this side right over here. Okay, so they, that's what they want us to find is x. Okay, so if they're asking us to find that side length, the only information that we are given is we're given... Uh, one angle, right, other than the 90, and this side length. Okay, so we're going to use that information. So uh, we're going to go from the perspective of this. So we're going to say from angle A, right, first off, let's label the hypotenuse. Okay, so the first steps that we're going to do is we're going to label the sides. That's always our first step. Okay, so uh, hypotenuse is this one right over here, right? We're going to say that's a hypotenuse. Then from angle A, because that's the only one we know, right? We don't know that one. Uh, we could calculate that one, actually, but we know this one. So let's think about that one. So this is the opposite from there, right? This would be our opposite side, okay? And then if that's the opposite, then this has to be the adjacent, okay? So that's my first step is to label the sides uh, H, O, and then A, okay? Now, second is uh, which ratio, okay? So, let's take a look at what we have. We are working with O, okay? This is the information we have. We have O, and we're working with X. X is the hypotenuse, okay? So, we have, here's how we decide. We have hypotenuse and opposite. Hypotenuse and opposite. So, we think, okay, which one of these ratios has hypotenuse and opposite? This has adjacent hypotenuse, opposite adjacent. 
Oh, opposite hypotenuse, that's the sine. Okay, so we're going to use the sine. We're going to set it up the a length of the opposite over the hypotenuse because we can we just do the best we can with what we have to work with. So we're going to say the sine of angle A is equal to the uh, opposite over the hypotenuse, right? Okay, so that means it's going to be equal to okay, the opposite length is 6.5, right, over the hypotenuse, which is H, right? Uh, and we recognize that by X. Okay, so we're going to say it's uh, the sine of, what's our angle? Our angle is 26. Okay, so that's how we're setting up first. That's what we're thinking right there. The sine of a certain angle is equal to the opposite over hypotenuse. So the sine of angle 26 is equal to the opposite over the hypotenuse. So that's our second step. Okay, third step is we just solve. Okay, so we're going to uh, solve by cross-multiplying. Okay, so uh, what are we going to do? We're going to first set this up by uh, putting this over 1, right? That helps. And then we're going to say that times that equals that times that. So I like working with my x first. So check this out. This is sine 26 times x. Sine 26 times x. Okay, here's how we want to think of it. We want to think of the x first. So x times the sine of 26 is written as x sine 26. Okay, so x times the sine of 26 is written as x sine 26 equals Okay, so the x times the sine of 26 that's going to be equal to 1 times 6.5 which we know is 6.5 Okay, so now I know this part looks a little tricky. This looks weird right here, right? So we said x sine 26. We want to get to just x so we want to divide by what we want to get rid of, right? Think about that. We want to divide by what we want to get rid of. So we want to divide by that. Well, if I divide the left side by that, I have to also divide the right side by that, right? So that looks weird. You haven't done that before with those words, right? But we're just following the same math. So now, what do we happen? So whenever we have the same thing on top and bottom, those cancel out, right? What's left is just x, okay? So now, I'm going to type that right into my Desmos. Okay, I'm going to type that into my Desmos just right there, and then that's going to give me the answer of uh, approximately 14.827. Okay, now we said that we want to the nearest tenth, so that means one digit, right? So the tenth uh, means one decimal place after there. So we're going to ask the eight what to do, and the eight says uh, the two tells you to bring down the eight, and then we're going to bring down the four and bring down the one. So that's our answer is 14.8. Okay. All right, so I know we went through a lot of uh, stuff before we got there, but that's the basics of it. Now that we got that, let's go. All right, so in this one we said uh, this one was sine because we're using the opposite over hypotenuse. All right, let's check this one out. All right, let's see. It wants to find the value of x, so we see that x is this right over here. All right, and what angle do we have? We have this one to choose from, right? So we're going to say the uh, what we need to first, we need a label, right? Label or sides, right? So we know this is our hypotenuse, right? Uh, then we know that if this is the angle that we're working with, this is our opposite, right? And this has to be our adjacent, right? So what do we uh, next? We have to think about which ratio. Okay. So which ratio do we use? All right. So we are working with the hypotenuse, right? Hypotenuse, and we don't know the opposite. We know the adjacent, right? So Hypotenuse and adjacent. Which one has hypotenuse and adjacent? Okay, that's what we're asking ourselves. Okay, uh, that one has opposite hypotenuse. This one has opposite adjacent. Hypotenuse, hypotenuse and adjacent is cosine. So we're going to set it up like that. We're going to say the cosine of our angle is equal to the length of the adjacent over the length of the hypotenuse. All right, so we're going to say the cosine of our angle, which is 49, is equal to the adjacent, which is, so let's put that here, okay, so the adjacent, which is 20, over the hypotenuse, which is x, okay, then step number three, we're just going to solve, okay, so by cross-multiplying, okay, 
cross multiplying. All right, so let's make it happen. So let's go ahead and put that over one, right? And so we're going to say this times this equals this times this, right? So let's work with the x. We're going to say x times the cosine of 49. x cosine of 49 is equal to 1 times 20, which is always 20, right? We're going to divide by the cosine of 49 because we want to get x by itself, right? So if we do that, we have to divide this side by the cosine of 49. Okay, so as you might think, that cancels out. We're left with just x is approximately, and we're going to type that into our calculator, right? Just like that. And if we do that, we're going to get x is approximately 30.485. Okay, and so if we're going to the nearest tenth, we're going to say, okay, we're going to underline the 4. What, do, what does the 8 tell us to do? It tells us to raise that 4 to a 5. We're going to bring down the 0 and then the 3. So it's going to be still approximately, but 30.5. All right, hopefully that's making more sense. Now let's do our last example on these uh, trig ratios, all right? So on this one, once again, we're solving for x. Let's check out what, what they want from x. Okay, x is going to be that right there. All right, the angle that we have to work with is at 52. Okay, so let's think about what we have from 52. First off, we know that's our hypotenuse, right? And then what is x from 52? That is our opposite side, right? So if that's the opposite, that means that has to be the adjacent. Okay, so let's look at what we have to work with. We have the adjacent side. Do we know the hypotenuse? No, we don't know the hypotenuse. We know uh, we're working, or we don't know, but we're working with the opposite. So we're thinking what is opposite and adjacent, opposite and adjacent. So this is opposite hypotenuse. This is adjacent hypotenuse. This is opposite and adjacent. So we're going to say the tangent of our angle is equal to the length of the opposite over the length of the adjacent. So we're going to use tangent. So we're going to, let's write that down. We're going to think TOA, right? So we're going to say the tangent, tangent of our angle 52 is equal to, we said it was opposite over adjacent. So opposite side on this one is X. Okay, so this is one where we have X on the top, right? X and then uh, adjacent, our adjacent side is 7. So we're going to say set it up just like that. All right, so that's our uh, step number 1. Okay, we labeled it. Uh, step number 2, we f uh, figured out what ratio. Step number 3, we need to solve. Okay, so that's just solved by cross-multiplying, right? So let's do that. So the first thing, I always like to, of course, uh, work with my x first, the variable. So that's going to be 1 times x is just x equals. Now, once again, we're not going to say tangent, uh, okay, so we're saying tangent 52 times 7. We're not going to write it tangent 52, 7. We're going to say 7 times the tangent 52. We're going to say 7 times the tangent 52, okay? A common mistake, and don't write this down, but the common mistake would be to have the 7 over there, right? But then it looks like 527, so we're not going to do that. We're going to put the 7 in front. So x equals 7 tangent 57. Well, 52. Well, we're trying to solve for x, so let's just type that whole thing into our calculator just like that. So if we do that, that means x is going to be approximately uh, 8.959. All right, so go ahead and see what this one rounds to. Okay, this one's a little tricky. Okay, so sometimes this is a little tricky for some uh, but you got this, right? If we're rounding to the nearest tenth, we're going to ask the nine, uh, looking at the nine, we're asking the five what to do. Five tells us to raise that nine to a ten, right? So that means we carry the one, which means it's 9.0 uh, approximately. Approximately 9.0 is our answer. All right, so uh, that's the basics of uh, trig. So make sure that you do... Those are practice problems right now, please, before we move on to the next side. Okay, so uh, sine is when we have opposite and hypotenuse, so we just set it up opposite over hypotenuse. Co uh, cosine is when we have adjacent and hypotenuse, and tangent is when we have uh, the opposite and the adjacent. All right, so keeping that in mind, let's move on to the next page. Now, uh, we said we're going to use trig to find a side length. Okay, now we're going to use inverse trig to find an angle measure. So you might think inverse is backwards, right? The other way. Uh, so this one's using it, uh, the angle to find the side length. Now we're using the side length to find the angle. All right, so first off, uh, once again, it has to be in degree mode. 
Uh, that's the main thing. Then we're going to determine which ratio to use. Then we're just going to set up and solve it. Okay, so inverse trig uh, ratios are used to find the angle measurement given two side lengths. Okay, so the, the degree measurement of an angle A, so for instance this A, right, is going to be still that same opposite over hypotenuse. Right, so this is pronounced... inverse sine of angle A is equal to the length of the opposite side over hypotenuse. If we put that in there, that will give us the degree measurement. So we're just going to type that into our Desmos. Okay? Uh, this is pronounced, as you might imagine, this is pronounced the inverse cosine of angle A. Okay, that's how that's pronounced. The inverse cosine of angle A. Okay, so that will give us the degree measurement. Okay, and then similarly, uh, the this is called the inverse tangent of angle A. Okay, so that's how that's pronounced. Inverse tangent of angle A is opposite over hypotenuse. So the same um, lengths over the top and bottom is just whether we're using inverse or regular uh, trig. Okay, so uh, cosine is that adjacent over hypotenuse. Uh, tangent is opposite over adjacent. Okay, so let's get right into some examples. Just to go quickly. All right, so now we said solve for X. Now that we've got the background, look at what X is. X is an angle. Okay, so if we're looking for an angle, that means we need to use inverse trig, right? Find the an angle, you got to use the inverse trig. Okay, so uh, first thing we're going to do is we're going to label. All right, so once again, this is going to be our hypotenuse. Okay, then from the perspective of this angle that we're trying to find, this is our opposite, right? That means this has to be our adjacent. Okay, so then we think which ratio will we use? Okay, so what do we have to work with? We know that we have, um, we don't know the adjacent side, right? But we have the hypotenuse that we're working with, and we have the opposite, right? So opposite and hypotenuse tells us so, right? So, we're thinking so tells us uh, sign. S-O-H tells us sign, right? That's what we remember uh, from our notes is S-O-H. S O H, right? We're going to remember so, ta, toa. Okay, so with that one, we're going to, uh, once we label that one, we're just going to set it up. So the second, the ratio that we're going to say, okay, the ratio since we have the opposite and the hypotenuse, we're going to use the inverse sign, right? So we're going to say the angle X, right? Because we're going to use the inverse, okay? So we're going to look for the angle X is going to be equal to the inverse sine of okay our opposite over our hypotenuse right that's what we said okay so here's what we're going to that's our basic so now let's go ahead and fill that in what's going to be our opposite okay opposite is going to be 9 right okay and then so that's x equals and then our hypotenuse hypotenuse is 18 Okay, so now what we're going to do is we're just going to type this into our calculator just like that. So if we put that into our calculator, uh, that's going to give us uh, the sine of 9 over 18 is 30. So that means x is equal to 30 degrees. Okay, so by just knowing uh, what our uh, ratio is, we can just use our calculator to figure out what the same is. So if it's 9 over 18, and we might think, oh, a 30, 60, 90 the short leg is half of the hypotenuse, right? Because if that's 30, that has to be 60. All right, let's keep it moving. All right, next, uh, let's look at this one. Solve for x. Okay, this is trying to find the angle. All right, so if we're trying to find the angle, that means we need to use inverse trig, right? It tells us use an inverse trig. So let's figure out first we're going to label, right? So first thing we're going to do is label. We know that this one is our hypotenuse, all right? And then uh, if they want to look from this angle, this right over here is going to be our opposite, 
right? Uh, and then this is, has to be our adjacent, all right? So then we're going to think uh, step number two, which ratio, right? Which ratio do we use? Well, what do we have to work with? We have the adjacent, right? We've got the adjacent to work with. And do we have the opposite? No, we don't know that. We have the hypotenuse, right? So we have the hypotenuse and the adjacent. So hypotenuse and adjacent, we would look back and we would think, okay, a, a hypotenuse and adjacent, that's A and H. So that's cosine. So we're going to say the inverse cosine, all right? So to, um, step number three, we're just going to say uh, the angle X is equal to the inverse cosine of, right, uh, our adjacent over our hypotenuse, right? Okay, so that's going to be equal to the inverse cosine of, what's our adjacent? Our adjacent is 1.9, right? Okay, over our hypotenuse, which our hypotenuse, our hypotenuse is 3. Okay, so I know that looks weird, but now... We're just going to type this into our Desmos just like that. So if we type that into our Desmos, that's going to give us, I'm just going to circle it right now because we're going to box our final answer. If we type that in, that's going to give us approximately um, 50.507. Uh, I'm sorry, 50.703. Okay, that means if we're going to round to our nearest tenth, right? So let's go ahead and underline that 7. So what does that 0 tell us to do? It tells us to still bring down that 50.7. Right? So that's going to be our answer is approximately approximately 50.7 degrees. All right, so now that you got that, let's do our last one. Okay, so on our last one right over here, we have, um, it says solve for x. Okay, so the x is this angle. So that tells us we need to use inverse trig. All right, so let's think number one, we got a label, right? So the first thing we got to do is label. So we know that this is our hypotenuse, right? If we know that this is our angle, this has to be our opposite, right? That means this has to be the adjacent. Okay, so we're working with the adjacent and the opposite, right? So the second thing that we have to do is we got to think which ratio. Okay, so adjacent and hypo, adja, uh, opposite and adjacent. Okay, opposite and adjacent is tangent, right? Opposite and adjacent, remember tangent. So we're going to say the inverse tangent of ours, right? So we're going to say, uh, for step number three, we're going to say that angle X is equal to the inverse tangent of our opposite side over our adjacent side, right? So that means X is going to be equal to that inverse tangent of, okay? Instead of opposite, what are we going to substitute? We're going to substitute 5. Right over our adjacent side of 8.4. Okay, so that's the hardest part. Uh, as we've uh, come to see in many of our stuff, the hardest part is just setting it up. Anybody can type it in, but now that we know what to type it in, uh, type in. Now that we just type that into our calculator, so that's going to tell us that x is going to be approximately uh, 30.762. Okay, so let's go and round. To that nearest tenth, so we're going to ask that six what to do. It tells us to raise it to an eight, zero, three, work backwards, and so that's our final answer is going to be approximately 30.8 degrees. All right, so I know you got this. If you have any questions, just let me know. Let's make sure that we get all this done um, before our next uh, class, which is our test.